Hi everyone, um, I'm Jennifer Triana, Director of Education for TopoDot here in the U.S. Unfortunately, Ted had an emergency and wasn't able to attend, but um, you are free to contact him or me or uh, any one of us here if you have any questions. So today uh, I'll discuss why vertical classification is not necessarily a requirement anymore, uh, especially in terrestrial LIDAR. And where is the place for classification in surveying and mapping for transportation nowadays? So, um, let me see, change, there you go. A little history. Classification was mostly established as a data processing method for commercial airborne data. Um, about 10 years ago, most ALS systems can produce densities of about one point per square meter with a one meter plus or minus accuracy and were mainly used for wide area terrain mapping. Um, when it came down to use the data, the process was in essence to clean it all up and separate the ground from anything above. Um, then you'll create a 3D digital terrain map or DTM uh, from the ground classified point cloud. These DTMs had many practical uses, especially for large scale planning, bare earth, power line transmission survey, etc. When uh, with the introduction of mobile laser scanning, everything changed because the point cloud data characteristics changed. Um, because you were now collecting data along the road or rail uh, corridor at such a relatively short range and increase the spatial density and relative accuracy of the point cloud. So with this high density data, it allowed identification for extraction uh, in extraction of topographic features like brake lines, signs, pavement markings, utility covers, and more. Um, this new data supported now extraction of topography models that would be able to be used in uh, design, engineering, and construction requirements for transportation. Um, but the type of topographic models that um, were meant for that type of uh, process um, were necessary, were not um, uh, usable from the wide data area um, DTMs. Um, the classification of traditional ground and vegetation levels really didn't contribute to the extraction process of, of uh, features. Instead, it created a lot of, it was a lot of time consu consumption in trying to clean it all up and to try to create a perfect ground uh, classified um, cloud. And, and it wouldn't be a process that was fairly quickly, you would still have to do a lot of cleanup. And um, in order to just make it all automatic, the data either would have to be too pristine or the macro too powerful. So that just doesn't exist. Plus, like classifying by um, vegetation or by height really didn't identify features in general. So um, for example, here you see that the, the vegetation uh, and the sign are both in the same classification. So it doesn't really separate those features. And then the resulting DTM from such ground data um, misrepresented topograph topographic breaks um, or sh show those changes of elevation at a lower precision. Basically, it ignores man-made brake lines. Um, so all your walls and curbs would be completely ignored. Um, so when we started developing TopoDot about 10 years ago, we looked at those limitations from classification for terrestrial base data, mobile and uh, static. And we decided instead of recognizing uh, that all, most of these topographic models um, were encom encompass um, different features and that e each feature has its own structure and characteristics or signature. Um, so for example, here we're going to just show the road, for example. Um, but then we also have noise. Don't we want to clean up the noise? Of course, we realized that by looking at a specific signature or structure for each feature, the data that is not associated with that feature can be easily um, identified and ignored. So we developed filters within fe each feature extraction tool uh, to ignore the noise. 
and these uh, really revolutionized the process because it meant that we didn't need to classify the data at all. So we abandoned trying to make it all into just one macro, one algorithm to try to extract all the features and instead started creating individual tools for each feature. So for example here, the road extraction tool had its specific um, signature is to find the road curvature. There is one for brake line extraction to extract curbs and walls, etc. There is one for acid extraction that will identify just signs in uh, other acids, etc. When um, you bring all of these features that are now CAT features integrated into a complete topography model um, as brake lines and points, and most CAD software applications have a DTM engine that can convert all of these breaks and points into DTMs. Um, the resulting surface will now maintain the precision and accuracy of the original point cloud while meeting the uh, format requirements necessary for uh, downstream design, engineering, and construction operations. So you would now be able to identify those breaks uh, more accurately. I have a quick video here, not don't want to play it all, just kind of like a little bit here forward. As you can see, we have a road, a center line, there is some noise from vehicles and stuff. And by running this tool, you see that automatically picks up the points on the road surface and ignores all the noise from the vehicles. So that's the premise of uh, the purpose of this, is just to, to show that you can collect asset or features within the point cloud without having to uh, necessarily clean up the data. Um, so the question is, are classification requirements really gone? Well, for feature extraction, yes. And, but uh, classification has its place. In Topo, that, for example, we do offer the traditional classification of vegetation and the option to bring in classification from other sources but where we find that it's really useful is on the data analysis front. So um, we've seen that classification has proven an effective tool in uh, verification of design and uh, vehicle clash simulation and tunnels of uh, rail and roads, encroachment analysis uh, of power lines or um, on line of sight projection to basically identify where those clash, clashes would happen. Um, we can use it also for acid identification to isolate anything that sticks up from the ground that is specifically a sign, a pole, um, an acid. Um, and also in measurement extraction, monitoring of movement, uh, road pavement condition analysis, which is another way of identifying wear and tear on, on, on uh, road surface and more. So classification is not really dead, but um, we want to kind of uh, point out that it, its real use is in the um, analysis operations where it helps localize areas within the point cloud that are important to know. So I hope this helped your understanding of how to use classification in a moment where point clouds have become more powerful popular and useful, and to understand how to use it instead of attempting to clean everything up through classification.